coming into the kingdom. Lord Jesus, that our cousins, our aunts, our uncles, everybody that belongs to me belongs to you in Jesus' name. And Father, we just ask that a, that you send someone special into their life right now. You send someone special, divine a divine appointment, oh God, with them and your spirit so that they'll come to, into you, maybe even come back to you. In Jesus' name, we believe it now today. We believe it now today. And the church said, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, give him a hand clap of praise. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Let's go. 
you to believe this morning there is nothing too hard for for him <laughs> he endured the cross he endured the scourging he endured the beatings that would have killed a lot of people just the beating the cat of nine tails and the thor the crown of thorns that they placed on his head in mocking and dishonor he came from glory heaven and he was brought down to this lowly place, born in a lowly manger, walked on the dirty roads. And he came and he, and he was laid on that cross with you on his mind. And not just you on his mind, but every single person that belongs to you on his mind. Hallelujah. Nothing is too hard for him. <laughs> You, may, you might have looked at your own kids and said, they're too hard for me, that's for sure. But nothing is too hard for him. And all things are possible, come on, help me, to him who believes. Amen? <laughs> Prayer team, I want you to come forward today. I'm just believing God. Jesus is coming back, and I'm just believing God. I'm believing God for me and mine. I'm believing God for me and mine. I would that I would that none of mine perish. And for sure, I'm just evil man. For sure, he would that none would perish. So we're just going to stand in the gap today. Let's stand in the gap today, church. Is it worth it to you? Is it worth it to spend eternity with those that you love? To stand in the gap and just believe that the God of all creation is going to do for them what he's done for you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be his name. Come forward this morning, whatever your need is. Salvation for loved ones and friends and family. Healing in your body. Provision. That job to come your way. I'm telling you, there is nothing that's too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. He's got you. And he makes me speechless every day. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. 
We bless you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We magnify you. an on-time God. Hallelujah. Unfailing, but never Thank you. 
What a wonderful presence here today. Hallelujah. How many of you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. He's here. You know, before we pray together, I, I really sense that this is a season where you're going to find your supply and your provision that you have needed so desperately in your life. What was hidden is now going to be revealed. What was, what was veiled over is now going to be uncovered. And God's going to show you supernaturally your provision was closer than you ever imagined it to be. But all your worry and fretting and, and frustration was for nothing because God is a faithful God and he's coming right now in this season to unveil and uncover and show us the hidden riches that were even in the dark places of our life even in the things we didn't understand God has riches that were hidden to pull out to receive that are going to bless our life instead of that thing bringing you down that circumstance is what's going to take you over when you look to God as the source of your life. His promise is going to be an anchor that sustains you in this hour of your life. He's going to bring peace in your heart that's going to keep you. And I, I just want to tell you that what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn around and bring good out of it. God's bringing glory out of it. Riches that will last you the rest of your life that you will look back upon and say, God was there. He was faithful through that valley, and he brought me out. Hallelujah. Any good God today? I want us to just, you know what I want us to do? I want us, ship team, I want you, no, no music, but I want voices, just your voice. I want us to lift up our hearts to God and thank him for what he's doing in this hour in our life. And I believe as in the midst of our worship, in the midst of our praise, Revelation will come to you about things of provision in your life that you have needed in your life. But I'm here to tell you, it, it's in our heart looking to God and focusing upon Him and setting our affection on things above and not on things below. This is a day to turn away from the circumstance and get your eyes upon the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and begin to lift your voice. Give voice to praise right now. Come on, worship team. Come on, church. Let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be exalted in your life. Let the Lord be lifted up. Hallelujah. Show us, Lord. Show us, Lord. Show us, Lord. We look to you as the source of our life. Be magnified, O oh God. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Come on, church. Just keep blessing him. He's here right now. This is why we came to the house of the Lord. Oh, honor and glory. Honor and glory. Honor and glory to you, Lord. Lord, showing yourself real. Hallelujah. Glory be to God and the Lamb forever. Glory to your name, Jesus. Flesh and blood did not reveal it to us, but our Father who is in heaven, He revealed it to us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Somebody right here, right now needs to know, God is not a God that is far away from you. He is a God that is near to you right here and right now. He is wrapping his arms around you right here and right now. Receive his embrace and receive his love to your life and the supply that he has to offer and to give right now. Hallelujah. 
Everyone just say, Lord, thank you that you're present with me right now. Thank you that you're here with me right now, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord forever. Glory to God. Somebody that has a word. Nathan, come ahead. I am the Lord thy God in the midst of thee. I am mighty to save. To the uttermost, there is nothing too hard for me. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Surrender to me, and I will guide you in the path of your life. And if you will trust me, you will have no fear, no worry, no lack. Man, thank God. Come on, that's it. Just praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Will you worship him one more time? Such a, come on, just, just honor him right now. There is, if there's no lack in your life, I'm here to tell you, if that word, which I believe was straight from the throne, there is no lack. I thank you, Lord, for no lack in our life. Nothing, Jesus, hidden. Glory to your name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an old song that just says, He touched me and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know He touched me and He made me whole. Let's just worship Him as we sing it together. Renee.
with somebody next to you, if you will, and just embrace somebody. Bill, come up and pray for us, if you will, sir. And just honor the Lord and worship Him as He leads us in prayer. Father, we come in your precious name of Jesus. Lord, we just set ourselves before you. Father, as you were moved with compassion in the Bible, Lord, we ask you to be moved with compassion on your people this day, God. That your sweet Holy Spirit would manifest in their lives, Lord, and minister to the needs, God even in areas where it's information that they need. God, I ask you to send that information unto them, Lord. Father, where there's problems that need to be solved, I'm asking for the problem solver to get involved, oh God. Father, I cry out unto you on behalf of our people physically, God, that there would be healing manifest in their body. You are the healer, God. Healing is the children's bread. Father, may we partake freely of that that you've provided today. And I speak to disease and to sickness and to abnormality. I command it to loose its hold on our people, Father. And that we walk into that provision that you have for us of divine health. Father, I cry out unto you for a revelation to come alive in us, God. That your spirit would reveal truth upon truth. As it says in Isaiah, line upon line precept upon precept that you would reveal unto us your ways and your purposes and your means God in Jesus name Father may I cry out unto you for the comfort of the Holy Ghost to come under the mighty arm of the living God to come under and to support and to encourage in the name of the Lord Jesus that we'd leave this place different because we've encountered the manifest presence of our loving God. And we thank you for it, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Amen. Turn about three people, would you, and tell somebody God is good all the time. Would you? God is good all the time. Amen. You may be reseated in the house of the Lord. Let's welcome some new members in church today. What do you say? That'd be good. Uh, those who uh, took the class yesterday, uh, if you would come and stand up here at the front and face the congregation, uh, we will welcome you in to membership today. And uh, those who are ready to, so come right ahead and feel free to move this direction. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful for these. Y'all come right on up here, stand and smile and look pretty for everybody today. Yes. These are precious people. And I uh, uh, think Robin, somebody go get Robin. I know she stepped out in the back. Um, when we talk about membership, we're talking about the Lord adding to the church daily such, such as should be saved. Our visible and practical expression is this. We go through a membership class and we have understanding. And visibly we come and stand before the congregation. Uh, practically we pray and believe God for great things in their life. I want everything God's deposited in these to be spilled over on our church. I tell you what, they're precious people. Some of them have served God for many, many years, and uh, some are newer in the faith. But I'm just thankful for what God is doing and how he's adding to the church. How many of you know the church is a family? How many of you know you're, you're my brother and my sister in the Lord? And church family can be mighty close, can it? The church is the body of Christ. The church is the temple of God. We're a place where he dwells. All of these phrases are analogies of how we're interconnected with one another. Temple, a body, a family, we're connected. And uh, 
since I'm your brother, you may not like me, but you just, you just have to love me anyway because I'm your brother in the Lord. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, you're my brother and you're my sister in the Lord. Will you just, you're my brother, you're my sister in the Lord. Tell them you're not, you may not have to like all my ways, but you're still my brother and my sister. You got to put up with me. Come on up, Robin. We ain't forgot you. <laughs> Amen. So Life Fellowship is about connecting people with a purpose. We're about uniting people with the promise of God. We are about blessing people to experience God's presence in this corporate setting that, of what we're here it's about being a part. When you come and be a part of a church, it's about being part of something that's greater than yourself. I say it a lot, but how many of you know one of us is not as smart as all of us together? How many of you know we do need one another? We do life better together than we do individually. This life, Christian life, is a wonderful life. But I'm here to tell you, I'm thankful for people who's got my back once in a while. How many of you know one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight? And it's powerful. So we advance the vision. We have an impact. You say, why be a part of a church? Because of the fellowship, sense of belonging. That's why. It's good to belong somewhere, isn't it? There's protection. There's a covering. Amen. You've got people that are going to pray for you and stand with you and hold you up. There's nourishment spiritual food and revelation that God gives us when we come together and the word is ministered. There's a corporate release of God's presence as we're together. There's a greater release of his power. You might think you can make it on your own, but I'm here to tell you, you're going to need somebody sometime to help you. I've been serving the Lord for a long time. I'm 53 years, something like that. Somewhere in there. I already said it before I did that, didn't I? But I'm here to tell you, I would not take nothing from my journey now. But there have been times in our lives we've needed to cling to other people and their prayers. Thank God they were there because we were part of a body of believers. There's blessings in every arena of our life. And so we believe that God does move upon people's heart. There's never pressure from a pastor. For any part of church whether it's tithing being a member we let god work and move upon people's heart ministries we don't pressure people prime people now some of you that have been sitting soaking in sour for a long time i might come and twist your arm and say hey come on i got a job for you to do but god sets members in the body as it pleases him he does it and because he does it and because he is pleased I'm here to tell you I'm pleased this morning. As God is setting these in the body as it pleases Him. And if God is pleased this morning, I want you to know, Pastor is pleased today. You ought to be pleased today. Because your Heavenly Father is filled with joy and pleasure today. Because those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of their God. I'm believing for every one of these to flourish in a way they never have up till now. Amen in their life, their physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, every area of their life, I believe God has us covered. And I appreciate these who have come today. They are precious people in the Lord. And uh, we're going to honor them. And my wife's going to come and give a certificate to them. We have uh, Robin Guthrie down here. Everybody say hi to Robin. Just love her. And she's precious. And you know, she came with Gloria Price. Gloria brought her to church. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, it has been years, if I understand, that you, since you've been in church until you came to our church. And just, just months ago, is that right? And the Lord got a hold of her heart. And I remember her coming up to me about three weeks ago and just tears in her eyes saying, Pastor, this church has literally changed my life. Changed my life. And I'm here to tell you that's what we believe. That's how we roll around here. We believe you to be changed when you come. You don't leave like you came in Jesus' name. And so Robin has had a transformation take place. And that's what we're believing for. Give Robin a big praise this morning. Thank God for you, Robin, and your children. Robin's also getting baptized here in a little bit today. I said she's getting the whole enchilada this morning. She's getting the whole enchilada. 
Now she said she had a, a certificate of baptism when she was younger, but she was sprinkled. She said, I want the whole thing. I want to go under the water today. So we're going to put her under. And uh, Maria, God bless you. Maria Covington is so precious. Some of you, uh, you've seen her in, around the church. And, uh, you know, she's a blessing to the body of Christ. And I, I appreciate Maria. And I appreciate her spirit. And uh, here of late, she has been uh, a person that has come and, and just said, Pastor, I want to. I want to be submitted. I want to do whatever God has me to do. She has a right heart. She loves God. She believes in what God is doing in this hour and in our church. Give Maria God bless you this morning. Love you, Maria. Amen. Uh, Don and Phyllis Harris, and they came on Cowboy Day. And I think Doug and Doris came on Cowboy Day also. And you know, when you have Cowboy Day, I'm the high sheriff, you know, around here. We had a big... And I'm thinking, I'm either going to win a lot of people over or I'm going to lose some people on that day. But thank God they came and they were looking for a church that was open, friendly, fun. And uh, Don and Phyllis told me that when they came to our church, the first thing that struck them was that they, that we were just a friendly, friendly church. And they loved our Cowboy Day. And they've just been coming ever since. Now, when we were here, they, they, they lived in the area and they saw our church. He said, Pastor, I'm sorry. We just kept avoiding you all this time. We did not know what was there. And I said, I'll forgive you for avoiding us. But now that they've come, and that's why God placed us here as he did. He's made us visible. He's made us accessible. And he's made us undeniable and unavoidable. And uh, so God will somehow pull you in at some point uh, as you drive by. I, that's happened to so many people. And Don and Phyllis, uh, I just, this is Don and Phyllis Harris. They're precious people. They have a tremendous love for God. They have a heart for God. They've been in uh, church in Trinity the, in Cedar Hill for 19 years. And then they were closer over there to Grand Prairie for a number of years. And uh, then they over in this area and they say, well, let's just go try out Live Fellowship. And I like how people go, let's go see that church. So they come to this church. I like this church. And then they say, now this is my church. And so it's kind of a process. And I just appreciate Don and Phyllis. I appreciate their love for God. Give them a warm welcome this morning. Precious people in the Lord. And Douglas and Doris Davis. I've, I, I know they've come with Rufus and Sally. And, and they've had a tremendous impact upon their spiritual life and helping them. And uh, I, I see them over there. You know what I see so much? I see your love for God. It's so genuine. It's so authentic. And it's so real. And I so appreciate you just yielding to the Lord and letting Him plant you at Life Fellowship Church. They also came on Cowboy Day. And uh, uh, they like the high sheriff, I guess, too. So uh, that's why we have it. That's why we have those kind of days. And because uh, we're it's different it's something out of the ordinary and throws people off when they come but they like it and uh, God uh, speaks a message through all of it and I'm so thankful uh, uh, give Don uh, Douglas and Doris Davis a big welcome if you would amen 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 my wife is fixing to come in just a moment come stand with me as we pray but uh, once again, as we pray in agreement as a church, if you have a husband or wife sitting by you, would you just take them by the hand? I pray it hadn't been a long time since you've held their hand, uh, a loved one. And uh, we're going to ask God's blessing upon them and all that God has deposited within them to be released upon us. And as a pastor, I'm so thankful. We've been in this church now for this particular building this Sunday, the last Sunday of February is a six-year anniversary and I'm so thankful that God is still being faithful still calling people still planning people at Life Fellowship Church aren't you let's join hands together Heavenly Father I thank you for this wonderful group of people I thank you for their life thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit that is taking place in them even now thank you Lord that you're conforming us all to the image of Jesus Christ Thank you, Lord, that what you have begun in us, we have confidence, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in us will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I pray over their life today, God. I pray a blessing over them this morning as they are planted at Life Fellowship Church. I just speak favor. 
I speak increase in their life. I speak the joy of the Lord upon them. I speak prosperity upon them. I speak, God, that all the gifts, abilities, skills, and talents that you have placed within them, Lord, would come forth. I call it forth in the name of Jesus. That you would use them for the glory of God. Amen. To minister to each and every one of our hearts. And together, we will grow up into a perfect man, even into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless them today, Father, and we honor you and we give you praise for setting members in the church as it pleases you. Be glorified this day in Jesus' mighty name. And if the church believes that prayer, say a big amen. Amen. I'm going to shake their hand together. And uh, would you just stand one more time in recognition of uh, what God is doing? And let's just sing a song together. And uh, maybe uh, uh, as I hug, you embrace with me. Everybody just go like this. Say, we give you a big hug up there. All right, see, they love you. Amen. My wife's going to give you a certificate, and I'm going to hug your neck. You're my brother, you're my sister. Take me by the hand. Together we will work until it comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we walk inside by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. You're my brother, you're my sister. Won't you take me by the hand? God bless you. but together we're a mighty force. Hallelujah. You may be reseated, and Nathan's going to come and share some announcements with, with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We want to welcome all of our guests. We're delighted to have you. And we'd like to say that uh, if you would please, there's a connection card in the bulletin or in the seat in front of you. And if you would please fill that out so that we can get better acquainted with you. Also, our church would like to bless you. So if you'll fill out that card for us, we will appreciate it. Also, if any of you have a prayer request or a praise report, we would love to have that filled out on the same card. Amen. We're at Life Fellowship Church, and I'm experiencing the life this morning, aren't you? Amen. I'm thankful for his life abundance. Uh, also, we want to remind you our Easter outreach will be here before we know it, and we would ask those of you that can to bring candy to help us fill all of those thousands and thousands uh, we also need volunteers. If you would please sign up in the foyer, we would appreciate that. And if you have a business uh, and would love to invest in this outreach that is so powerful in Kittadel here and the surrounding area, please sign up for that to sign your business up. Also today we have life groups and uh, they will be at 5 o'clock. We have several locations and uh, the information is in your bulletin. But our student life uh, is led by Cody and Courtney. Uh, our young life, James and Stacy Grail, achieving in life, Keith and Carrie Houston, and appreciating life, Mark and Terry Walker, advancing in life, Charles and Carolyn Tom, and the young at heart, Bill and Carolyn Neelan. If you need to know the address for those meeting places, they are in your bulletin, and for the sake of time, please look at that. If you have any questions, please talk to me after service. Uh, Wednesday night. I want you to remind you there's something for our children and you. And also, how many of you have been enjoying 
the teaching our pastor has been doing. Amen. Amen. God, God has a gift in each and every one of us that we want to discover our gifts and use them for his glory. So please don't uh, miss that. Also, uh, Brother Mark Latiano, who's in charge of our evangelism and missions, uh, gave me this note. We want to thank everybody that went out with Fishers and Men yesterday to love and witness in our neighborhood. God bless you. Nathan, and uh, we're going to continue on the part of discovering your gift. We're doing discovering our gift, developing our gift, and demonstrating our gift. And I believe God has deposited a gift on, on the inside of every one of us. And uh, we're still taking a little bit extra time on the discovering our gift. So uh, you can still catch it. Uh, feel free to come out. We have a worksheet for you. We have so much uh, information for you that is going to fill your heart and fill your mind and help God to... Uh, help you to understand what God's deposited. You don't decide what your gift is, you discover what your gift is, and you discover what God has placed on the inside of you, and so you'll be blessed. Amen. How many is happy in the Lord today? Amen. Must be a good time to receive an offering then. Hallelujah. If our ushers uh, uh, take their position and come forward, and we're going to honor the Lord. Uh, as I said, today is a five-year anniversary, a, a six-year anniversary of this building. It's, uh, it was actually the last Sunday. It just happened that it fell that way. It's the 29 years Beverly and I have been in Kennedale. Can you say amen? That's just, a, you know, it's just this Sunday, so much uh, anniversary. And we love it here. We love what God's called us to do. And we haven't even got started good yet. We're, you know, if we just double what we are right now and each one bring one, we would, we would just be, couldn't hold them all here today. And uh, we believe... God has made our building visible, accessible, and undeniable. We didn't just come to Kennedale to fit in. We came to Kennedale to take over, just so you know. How many of you know the violent, the, how many of you know they suffer violence and the violent take it by force? And so we're here to take it by force. We're here, and God has positioned us to, to make a difference. Everybody say, make a difference. Have an impact. Assert our influence. Bring about change. And fulfill a purpose. Fulfill a purpose. That's why we're here today. And um, I believe that God is doing just that in our life and in the lives of people. And as you give today, you're sowing, I believe, in, in tremendously good soil. And I believe the soil is what determines the quality of your harvest. And as you, the quality of your seed will determine your harvest. And I, and I, I want you to know that as you sow today, as you give today, I believe that God is going to bless you. You're sowing into lives that are being changed. Love, healings, new beginnings. People reaching their full potential in God. And uh, that's what we're about. We want God to do all that he's done in your life. And so as you give today, we worship the Lord with our giving. Tithing is a moment of worship. It's not commercial. It's worship to the Lord. I never want to ever minimize what God has put on our heart as a church about what this moment is all about. It's worshiping the Lord. How many of you are glad he called us out of darkness into this marvelous light? That's what we're to declare as we, as we do our giving, as we tithe. We're tithing to the Lord. And uh, tithe is our 10%. And we honor the Lord with the first fruits of all of our increase. Then he said, our barns will be filled with plenty. Our presses will burst forth with new wine. And I have found it to be true in our life. Ushers, come ahead. If you have a check, make it out to LFC. Make sure you designate it on the offering. If you're a guest, a first-time guest, we'd love for you to fill out a card. We just want to make sure we get all the information and all the events that are coming up to you. You'll be on our email list, and, and you'll have uh, access to all the upcoming events at Black Fellowship Church and all that's going on here. May God bless you today as you give. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for your presence. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We honor you today. I speak favor, peace, and increase upon your people. Pray that you'll go before us and open doors that need to be opened and close doors that need to be closed. We recognize you as the very source of our life, and we thank you for what you've done for us through the blood of Jesus. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing But am I alive? I won't keep searching for answers that aren't here to find All I know is I'm not home yet This is
know that song. Kids, come on up to the front. Let me bless you today before you go. Nathan, make one more announcement about the men's bowling. Would you do that? Men, we have a really good time on Thursday night. This coming Thursday, uh, we'll be meeting at Alley Cats. And uh, we tried to get some other places, but they had tournaments going on. So meet us over at Alley Cats, and it's $10 per person. We have a couple hours of fun. And, and please, please come, come and join us this coming, coming Thursday night. Amen. Amen. Yep. Thursday. 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 So come on, man. See what you can do. I won't talk too much trash. Yeah, that's right. Stretch your hands toward these kids. We thank God for every one of these children. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in the life of the children. We say the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you with sound minds, health in your bodies. I bless you with angels to surround you all the days of your life. And from children to know the holy scriptures that's able to make you wise into salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, kids. I love you. Have a great time. If you have your Bibles, look over and keep your finger in the book of Lamentations. I'll give you a moment to get there. Lamentations is way in the back, in the middle. Chapter 3. I was reading of, about a man by the name of Thomas Chis, Chislom, who was a songwriter, wrote a lot of poems. He wrote over 1,200 poems in the space of his life between 1920 and 1955. And one of the poems that he wrote blessed one of the ministers at the Moody Bible Institute up north, that he set it to music. And he sent this poem to one of the ministers up at Moody Bible Institute with this note. He said, looking back over the entirety of my life, I must not fail to record the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God. Over the course of an entirety of my life, I must not fail to record the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God. And Thomas Chislom wrote the words, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow or turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I have ever have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. He took it from this verse of scripture in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 21. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is because the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Say it with me. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. You know, when we come to the end of our life, when we look back over our life, even at this point today, if we look back over the entirety of our existence, you and I would have to testify and we would have to declare that God has been faithful to me. How many of you can say that this morning, that as a Christian, you look back over your life and everything you've been through. How many of you can say, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I'm here to tell you we serve a faithful God this morning. This message is a little different than what I, the realm I've been going in, but I guess maybe things that we've been going through uh, personally, being also an anniversary. I'm just so glad to be in the house of God this morning, I can't tell you. And I just want to let you know that this pastor also stands up with a microphone in hand 
and a Bible in the other. And he can give witness and he can testify to the fact that God has been faithful to him. God is faithful to us. And I want to declare with all my heart, great is thy faithfulness this morning. 2 Timothy 2.13 tells us, you therefore, that, that's the wrong scripture, but it says, when we did not believe, it says God, look, look down in uh, 2 Timothy 2.13. Just look at that scripture real quickly. 2 Timothy 2 and 13. I have someone do the PowerPoint and they have to read my handwriting and they have to have a gift of interpretation when they do my handwriting. It says, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. If we believe not. Now, I know that there's been times we've gone through situations and gone through trials and we have proved less than faithful ourselves. Can I get a witness on that? We've been through situations and we may not have been faithful to him. But how many of you know in all that we went through and even though we weren't faithful to him, how many of you know God was faithful to us? He cannot deny who he is. He cannot deny. I don't know about you, but there's been times I've heard people testify when they were running from God. How many of you know God didn't run from them? God ran toward them because he's a faithful God this morning. How many of you know when things got overwhelming in your life and sometimes you wanted to try other ways to try to, 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 to pacify that feeling that was going on in your life and you look for something else to try to help you and, and you were less than faithful to God to look into Him. How many of you know when you weren't faithful, how many of you know God was still faithful to you? Because He's a faithful God. And how many of you know you can run but you can never hide from God anyway? He's a faithful God. He cannot deny Himself. So I want you to understand this morning that God is going to remain true. God remains faithful to us. He's faithful to me when I wasn't faithful to him. I can say with Thomas Chislam, all I have ever have needed, his hand has provided. Strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow. I can say blessings are all mine with ten thousands beside. I can say God has been faithful from the beginning of time and God will be faithful to the end of time. Revelations chapter 19 verse 11, John said, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. How many of you know his name is even faithful? When this whole thing comes to a crescendo and the end of time comes, I'm here to tell you one thing is going to be true. God is going to be righteous, God is going to be found just, and God is going to be found to be a faithful God. Psalms 89 verse 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, and with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Amen to God. Most of you know my daughter, being a pastor, there's nothing ever hid from us. It's going to get on Facebook, Twitter, it's going to get somewhere, and that's okay. Our life is an open book anyway. Okay, she had her third wreck and told her her third car. But in all three wrecks that were totaled, she's never had any more than just a little bump or a little bruise and barely that. Why? I believe the angels were watching over her. Now I am saying I am increasing my faith so that there are no more wrecks. Can somebody help pray with this daddy up here today? 23 years young to, on Monday. And I want to tell you, my mom and dad were first generation Pentecostal preachers. Uh, I'm a second generation. And I believe God is going to be faithful to my daughter, the next generation. Because he's faithful to all generations. Well, with my mouth, I'm going to make known thy faithfulness to all generations. If you're here and you're a Christian, you're believing for your child, I'm here to tell you, go ahead and praise him in advance and thank him in advance because he's a faithful God. You can lift your voice and you can say, I'm going to sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And with my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Hallelujah. You know, we're baptizing Jonathan's son Samuel today. Just a young boy, but... Jonathan was telling me, he said to his son, son, why do you want to be baptized? I believe he's in first grade, is he, Jonathan? Kindergarten. He said, daddy, 
I want to be obedient to being a disciple and what God would have us to do. Can I tell you, they never are young enough. I'm here to tell you, even from a child, they can know the Holy Scriptures. It's able to make them wise unto salvation. And as parents, we can declare, great is thy faithfulness to all generations. I'm believing for sons and daughters and granddaughters and, and sisters, those granddaughters getting baptized this morning. I'm here to tell you, I'm believing for sons and daughters, granddaughters and grandsons to come into the kingdom of God. He's faithful to his word, Isaiah 25, 1. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. Amen. Everything God has ever said in his word can be trusted. You can bank on it. He's going to be faithful to his word. How many of you know not one jot or one tittle is ever going to be passed away until all of it is fulfilled? Can I just preach to somebody this morning? God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. Whatever God has spoken to your heart, I'm here to tell you, keep your heart open for what God has said to you and keep praising God in the midst of everything that comes against you because one thing is for sure, God is going to be faithful to what he put and deposited on the inside of your heart. I can say I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Why? Because he's a faithful God. I consider this particular scripture in Lamentations. He said, this I recall to mind. In verse 21, therefore have I hope. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And when I consider this, this is considered one of the great confessions of the entire Bible. And it is because of when it was written. It was written right when Babylon had come into Israel, had come into Jerusalem and had destroyed this city and destroyed the temple. They left it in nothing but a trash heap. And Jeremiah, you know, is called the weeping prophet. That's why lamentations means tears and, and crying. How many of you know what it is to shed a few tears once in a while? But how many of you know blessed is the person who passes through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, because God knows how to make it a well. God knows how to turn that thing around in the, the most sorrowful point of your life. God knows how to make it the most joyful part of your life. Don't ever die in the place God has destined to be your place of deliverance. Don't ever quit and give up in the place that God has said. Even though it looks not what you, you don't understand what you're going through. Don't quit in the very place that I have designed to be the place of your deliverance. Jeremiah is looking at what's going on. He sees nothing but distress, nothing but dismay, nothing but despair. He doesn't see one thing in the immediate natural circumstances to give him hope of any kind whatsoever. He doesn't see one thing that would give him grounds to anticipate anything will ever be different than distress and dismay and despair. He doesn't see any evidence that, would, that there will ever be a brighter day than what he's seeing right now. How many has ever been through something and it just looked like in the natural there was no witness, no evidence in the natural that anything's going to change or anything's going to get better. Jeremiah, for him to have hope, he was going to have to look somewhere else than where he was looking. For encouragement, Jeremiah was going to have to look some other place for his hope. For confidence and optimism, Jeremiah was going to have to turn away from the immediate situation that he was facing and look for a source that was going to give him help and hope in what he was going through. And I just want to tell you this morning, there's times in your life when your circumstances will give you no grounds for hope or anticipation that anything will ever be different when you look at it. You'll have to look somewhere else other than the natural or the physical. But as Christians, it doesn't end with just what our circumstances are saying. 
Okay, I got one amen on that, but let me say it again. As Christians, it does not end with just what our circumstances are saying. As Christians, what we're going through, it doesn't end with just what the situation looks like. It's not the end with just what we see in the natural. Just because the circumstances are saying it's over, this is it, it'll never be any different. Just because the circumstances are saying that, that doesn't make it so. I'm glad I have somewhere else to look. I'm glad I'm a Christian this morning. I'm glad I can look into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm glad this morning that when all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I can stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I can go to the rock. Amen. I'm glad for Jesus, aren't you, this morning? 2 Corinthians 4, 17 said, This light affliction is but for a moment, worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. I've got something else I can look to. I've got a vision beyond the natural. Amen. I can set my vision and my hope and my faith upon what God's word has declared. Amen. And look past the immediate situation and know that God's going to make a way somehow in the midst of my distress and despair. When you're going through... What you're going through is nothing compared to what it's going to produce in you when you learn to count it all joy when you go through the things you're going through. When you give it to God because He is a faithful God. How many of you are glad you can focus on God's faithfulness? And here's what you have to do is what Jeremiah did. He's looking around, nothing in the natural. So here's, I want you to notice how he says it. He said, this I recall to mind. Suddenly, verse 21, if you keep reading from chapter 1, 2, and 3, all of a sudden, it switches and turns on a dime. And it happens when he does something. He said, this I recall to mind. There's an attitude change. He said, when I recall this to mind, therefore I have a hope. Are y'all with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word recall means to make, to return to my heart. To purpose to change your thoughts from one thing to another. To recall is not something automatic. It's not something you wait to just see if it will happen. To recall something means you have to do something. It means you have a choice. It's a choice and a decision. It's a calculated pointed effort on your part. On your part. It's not enough just to look away from something. You've also got to look towards something else. This is why Philippians 4 and verse 8 says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on these things. If there be any virtue, if there be anything to praise God about, think upon these things. Can I tell you, God has given us a lot to be thankful for. Can I tell you, there's a lot of good report. Amen. Who hath believed my report, God said. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Can I tell you, has God been good to anybody this morning? Has God brought anybody out from a terrible situation before? Amen. How many of you know if he brought you out once, he'll bring you out again? How many of you know if God did it one time, he is here this morning to let you know whatever you're facing and whatever you're going through, he can bring you out once again. He is a faithful God. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't teach you to swim to let you drown. I'm here to tell you, he's going to make a way where there is no way because he is a faithful God this morning. But you've got to recall to mind. It means you've got to do something. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations or every high thing. The word imaginations is the word arguments, theories, reasonings, deceptive reasonings, philosophies, false arguments. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're going through a situation, your mind will be bombarded. How many of you know the enemy does have fiery darts that he throws at the believer? How many of you know it's time we pick up the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked? But you've got to learn to cast down. You've got to cast them down. That means, that means you've got to do something. It doesn't mean it happens automatically. It means you've got to take control of what's going on in your mind. 
Hallelujah. You got to say, hey, wait a minute. That's not a God thought. Amen. That's a deceptive thought. Wait a minute. That's not a God thought. That's an argument trying to deceptively reason against what God already told me in my heart about how this thing's going to turn out. You got to do something. You got to cast it down. Amen. I was at Walmart grocery shopping. You know, I've had a lot of experiences at Walmart. Y'all pray for me. The song was playing. My mind was just, you know, I go into ozone when I do grocery shopping. Beverly's really doing most of the grocery shopping. I'm just pushing the basket along. Song was playing. And that song got in my mind. It was about, it was a country western song about divorce and leaving. And I'm pushing the basket thinking, what if Beverly left me? I started singing that song. You know, I'm just going along singing a little bit with the song. And all of a sudden I had to stop myself and go, hey, wait a minute. Y'all don't act like y'all never done a song you had to throw away. Y'all look at me like, man, Pastor, we'll pray for you. Amen. Because I know everybody in this room has had that thought before. A, a song gets stuck in your mind before. And then that song gets stuck, and then you think of all these different things going on, all these scenarios. And in, in split seconds, within, within just seconds, you got, you got a divorce going on. You got court going on. You're paying all this child support going on. And you're going, what in the world is going on with my mind? You know what you got to do? You got to automatically do something. If you don't automatically do something, you'll be singing that song all day long. Everything will be gloom and despair and agony on me, deep, dark depression. How many of you know you got to stop and say, hey, wait a minute. Amen. God is the source of my life. Amen. God's going to supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is a make away God. He said, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When voices are in your head and they're exalting themselves against what God has already told you, then take a moment and refocus and don't just turn away from those thoughts, but bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That means change on a dime. That means you don't just turn away from a thought. It means you, to you turn toward another thought. Are you with me today? When your body is being attacked by a sickness, you don't just turn away from that. You just turn toward, thank you, Lord, that by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Amen to God. When sometimes it seems like you don't have a dollar to change and you don't know what's going on, you just keep looking to God and saying, God, I thank you that you take, pros you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. You start blessing the Lord. You stay on the word no matter what. Because I'm here to tell you, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith this morning. We don't go by our feelings. Amen. How many of you know we go by what is right to do? Hallelujah. We go by what God's word says. So he said, this I recall to mind. What was it Jeremiah had to stop and get a grip? What did he have to change? He said, this I recall to mind. It's in the next verse. The Lord's mercies. Amen. That we are not consumed. You know, how many of you know we wouldn't even be here this morning if it wasn't for the mercies of God? I wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be here right now. But God is a faithful God. The word mercies there is the Hebrew word hasid. It means the everlasting love of God. Can I tell you, he loves you with an everlasting love. His compassions fail not. Man, I just love that. So I don't have to focus on the miseries that are around me. I focus on the mercies that God is have, that has coming down upon me. I don't have to focus upon, amen, the, the complaints and the whining and the complaining of the circumstances around me. I can focus upon the fact his compassions, they never fail. There is a God who is bigger than my immediate circumstance. He superintends over my life. He can see more than I can see. He can work better than I can ever work. I may not understand it all, but I can trust him because he's faithful. He's a God of mercy and compassion, a God who will be faithful to his word. So Jeremiah said, this I recall to mind, the Lord's mercies I'm not consumed. His compassions fail not. Now, notice how he's saying this because his theology becomes his doxology in a way. Here's how he's phrasing it. He's phrasing it in second person. He's like he's talking to you 
or he's talking to me or he's talking to somebody and he's saying, you know, the Lord's mercies, they are not consumed. His compassions, they fail not. But then he stops and he, and he turns from talking to you and he turns and talks directly to God. He says the Lord's mercies were not consumed. His compassions fail not. Then he stops. Great is thy faithfulness. Can I tell you, when you get the word right, your worship will be right. When you're in the midst of hell and high water around you, start talking to yourself. Start talking to other people. You know, God said in his word, by his stripes I'm healed. God said in his word, Peace I live with you. My peace I give into you. Not as the world. God said in his word. Pretty soon after you start talking to someone about what God's word said. Pretty soon you'll start turning your worship to God and say. God great is your faithfulness. Don't get around people and have a pity party. How many of you know you're the only one invited to a pity party? Nobody wants to hear you complaining and whining and groaning and complaining and moaning and all that. They only want to hear your praise upon your heart. Start talking to people. Get with people and say, you know, yeah, there's been, there's been a few challenges in my life recently. But you know what? I'm glad I'm more. You know, the Bible says I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Yeah, there's been this trial and that trial and this has happened. But you know, God's word said in, in everything, I triumph in Christ. Amen. Yeah, there's this thing coming against me. But God's word says in Christ, thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. You know what you'll be doing pretty so pretty soon you'll preach yourself happy. Do you know why you look for me to preach you happy? You can preach your own self happy. Come on, I ordain everybody a preacher out there right now. Just start preaching yourself happy. Hallelujah. Start thanking God for his goodness and mercy. Amen. Paul is your mother here. Where's she at? Darling, lift your hand. Right here. She's been in the hospital for what? Like two months? Huh? A month and a half. And I tell you what, when I go ahead and stand. Amen. Give her a big hand. That's all right. We we worship we love you. We worship the Lord on your behalf. When I went into the hospital, I tell you what, her spirit was so sweet. She is the most godly woman, reaches out to God. You know what she's doing? She's not thinking about what's around her and what she's going through. She's only focused upon great is his faithfulness in her life. And I'm so thankful to see you back in church. You're here last week and today. Thank God. You have to just every once in a while stop and you have to start talking to yourself. How many of you know life and death are in the power of the tongue? How many of you understand if you'll start speaking the word of God, start talking to one another? You know what Beverly and I have done? I mean, it's been a challenge. It was easy to talk about why was she out late? Why was this happening? Why was that happening? But we you know what we had to do. We had to stop and we had to start getting back on the covenant that says great will be the peace of your children. I said, Beverly, God's word says this and this is where we stand and we're not moving off of it. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, when you begin to recall the word of God to mind, that's what's going to produce hope in you. If all you're doing is talking the situation and the circumstances, that's what's going to cause depression in you. So you've got to measure yourself. Am I thinking on things that are good, lovely, just? Or am I thinking upon things that are of a good report? If there's anything of virtuous, if there's anything of praise, is that what I'm thinking about? Because how my thoughts go is how my life is going to go. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Come on, Brother Danny, keep preaching. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. Isaiah 26, 3 says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Can I tell you, God is calling every one of us to be preachers and talk the word of God. Talk to one another God's word. Keep, keep it just where you know that when I, when I go to certain people and I go to certain people in this church, I know they're not going to let me ever get away. If I ever wanted to talk depression or talk defeat, they're going to say, hold on a minute. That's not what God's word says. Get around people. If you're the only smartest one in your group, you need a new group. Come on. You need to get around people that you know when you get around, they're going to say, you know what? God's been speaking to me. Here's what God says in his word. And before you know it, your heart is going to be ignited with praise to God. And you're going to be saying, God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you are steadfast, unmovable, and you're always true in my life and in my heart. 
So we begin to call to mind this. We begin to see God's nature and character. That's why when we say in Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith, I'm looking to who he is as a person. I'm looking to who he is in his character and in his nature. Amen. And so I'm not going to get distracted by what's going on because I know who he is and he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is. There is a God who is at work in your life right now. And when you realize there is a divine supply that's always ahead of your daily need and it's found in God and God alone. His mercies are new every morning. His compassions fail not. How many of you know whatever God started in your life, he, he is going to finish it? Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. Jeremiah praised God for his faithfulness when all he could see was one little part of the big picture. I might not understand everything everybody goes through, and you'll never understand it this side of heaven. We do know in this world is what? Tribulation. But then the rest of that verse says, be of good cheer, because I have overcome. But when you're going through something, you see one, you, all you see is one little part of it. You don't see the big picture. And when Jeremiah was going through what he did, and you read all the, the scriptures, he was just being authentic to who he was. And he was saying, I don't understand. But he said, I'm going to stop right here and recall something to mind. And what he didn't see, he did not see that even though the Jews would be taken captive and so forth, he did not see ahead how God was going to protect them down the road in their captivity. He did not see how God was going to permit the Jews to return back to the land of Israel. He did not see how God was going to move upon the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, and was going to have a change of heart. He didn't see how the good hand of the Lord was going to be upon Nehemiah and Ezra to go back and rebuild the temple. He did not see that uh, God was going to enable these guys to go back and, and rebuild the walls and rebuild the temple. He didn't see how God was going to protect them from heathen nations that hated the, the Jewish people desperately, but God was going to protect them. He didn't see all of that right at that moment. All he knew was what he had was written and, and, and to look to. And all he can say was, I'm going to recall to mind God's covenant. And I don't understand what's going on now, but I know this, that in the end, everything is going to be all right. He didn't see all that was going to happen, but he did know God was going to be faithful to his word. You'll be called upon to trust God and trust his faithfulness when all you can see is just a small part of a big picture. How many of you understand you've got to learn to trust him when you can't even trace him? You've got to learn to walk on this word when you don't understand it. Psalms 31, 15, my times are in your hands. And I want you to know God superintends over your life. He superintends over my life. Look at your notes. I'm going to get to it here. Number one, I have the right perspective. When you have a focus on God's faithfulness, you can have the right perspective in your life. I can trust his word and I can begin to look at the events of my life and I can get, have a different perspective. How many of you know every once in a while you've got to give an entirely different meaning to what you're going through. The meaning you give, whatever you're going through, is what is going to continue to shape your life for your future. Your mind becomes fixated and replays the picture over and over because of the emotional weight that we attach to the event of what we're going through. Our reality becomes the same as our constant thoughts about it. That's why some people's reality is defeat because their thoughts are defeat. And so their reality about that event and about what's going on becomes defeat and negative and complaining. Y'all love me to this morning? If all I ever believe about a circumstance is what I see, my perspective is going to be way too limited. Because as Christians, we have a greater, larger perspective than just what we see with our eyes and in the natural. 
That's why we don't judge anything before it's time. All I know is it's time we take God's word and look at God's word. Look at our circumstance through the lens of God's word. We need a different perspective than just what our senses, our emotions about that situation are telling us. We need a God perspective about what God is saying about that. And so that event, when I give it a meaning from God's word, suddenly, my, suddenly something happens in my heart. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. I don't know about you, but I don't see anything that I go through from God's word that's going to leave me defeated, ever. Life, death, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, nothing can ever separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So that means if I'm putting my faith in him and trust in him, that means God's going to make a way somehow. So that means whatever, whatever event is going on, I can choose through the perspective of God's word to give that event the right meaning than the meaning that everybody in the world would give to it. That's why people, oh, we're going through so, such economic troubles. I don't even look at all of that. Why as a Christian am I going to look at the world? I'm not being ignorant or just hiding like an ostrich putting my face in the ground by no means. But I'm just saying I look away from that and I've got another source. That's the meaning I'm going to give it. And once I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed ever begging bread. Y'all with me today? Learn to give a meaning to that. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, There is no temptation taken you that such is common to man, but God is what? Who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. That's not saying God's going to put more on me than I... He'll never put more on me than I can bear. I've heard many people tell me, Well, that scripture says God will never put more on me than I can bear. Well, God's not putting it on you in the beginning anyway. I said, God's not putting it on you to begin with. But he will not allow you to go through a testing or a trial that you can't handle. There's no situation that you face that's beyond the reach of his word, of his grace, and of his power to make a way for you. God is faithful. I've heard people say in the past, well, I just went through too much. I just can't handle it anymore. Yes, you can handle it. I said, yes, you can handle it. There is a grace to get through that. And God said, with it will come a way of escape. Why will there be always a way of escape? That you might be, because God is faithful. And that you might be able to bear it. That means if you don't get delivered from it, he'll deliver you in the midst of it. But God will always be faithful. It'll never be him that is wrong. Hallelujah. And number two, I can live in the present. I can live right now today. It says, it's because the Lord's mercies were not consumed. His compassions fell not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Everybody say every morning. See, yet, yesterday's in the womb. Tomorrow's in the, yesterday's in the tomb. Tomorrow's in the womb. All I have is right now, today. I have today. How many of you understand when I woke up this morning, there was a new mercy when I woke up? His mercies are new. Mercies I've never known before are new to me. Mercies I've never experienced, but whatever I have to wake up to today, there's going to be a mercy that's going to more than match it. There's nothing I ever go through, amen, that's going to be a greater force than the mercy that God has for me on the inside of me. Because His mercies are new every morning. That means this. When I woke up this morning, Psalms 118 says, This is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Weeping might have endured for a night, but joy does come in the morning. You might have gone through a long trial and a heartache, but I'm here to tell you there's joy today in the morning. Get your praise on. Hallelujah. Get your worship on. It's time to glorify God because he's here with you. He has a new mercy for you, and he's going to make a way where there is no way for you. You can have right now in the present. I don't have to be trapped in the same False realities created by my limited perspective that everyone else does who does not know God. The God that I serve is bigger, greater, mightier, bigger than any situation that I will ever face in my life. And if God be for me, who can be against me? 
Some people are plagued by guilt and shame and doubt because of their life and the mistakes they made. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, you can take yourself out of the penalty box that you've been punishing yourself for a long time. It's time to just receive cleansing in your heart. Don't let the accuser of the brethren hold things over your head or put you over a barrel because of past mistakes that you have made in your life. Everybody, all God's children has made some mistakes. But I'm here to tell you, he is faithful. He is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we come before him. This is why our church is about a new beginning in our life. And I just want to tell you, when you come here today, today is day one. When you give your life to God anew and afresh and reaffirm him, today is day one. And as your day, so shall your strength be. Hallelujah. And the last one here, let God be your portion. Let God be your portion. Look at that verse of scripture. It's right after great. He said, the Lord is my portion. I want you to notice how he says that. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. You know, portion doesn't mean a piece of something. Doesn't mean a little part of something. But the word portion means an inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. All that he is, all that he's done, all that he will ever do. I have, I am part of that. Aren't you glad? How many of you know because he lives? You too shall live. That's your inheritance this morning. Amen. I know some of you have been through some difficult situations. But I just want you to hear it. The Lord is my portion. Hallelujah. He is your inheritance. Saith my soul. You see, it's not just enough to have, have you know, well, that's what the preacher says. It's not just enough to say, well, that's what it says in the Bible. But you've got to come to a point where you say, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Your soul's got to do some talking. Your soul's got to be able to embrace it. Your emotions, your mind, your will has got to be able to know that you know that you know. This is not just something Pastor Danny preached. This is not just something in Jeremiah or, or Lamentations 3.22. No, Pastor, I can stand up myself and I can say, my soul can say. Because I remember when my soul was overwhelmed, I was led to that rock that was higher than I. It was a shelter for me and a strong tower from, from the enemy. My soul was being overwhelmed, but somehow I didn't get swept away. And when I looked to him, he was able to come and cause me to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And so my soul can say, I thank God that so-and-so can say it. And I thank God someone else can testify about it. But it's personal to me today, Pastor. I can say, great is his faithfulness. I can say his mercies are new every morning. I can say today, God is a good God. Are you with me this morning? 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God who has called you into this fellowship by his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful by whom you are called into this fellowship. Can I just tell you? You have been called into something that is the greatest thing you could ever be a part of is the kingdom of God, the fellowship of his son. And he is faithful to those who he has called into it. You see, you're not trying to get the victory. You've already got the victory because you've been called into the fellowship of his son. I don't have to reach for it. I'm born victorious. He that is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Aren't you thankful for it? And so God is faithful in that he's called me to the fellowship of his son, 
So now I know he's going to see me through. He's going to bring me all the way. I'm not going under. I'm going over. I told Cody, I want you to put on the sign all week long. We're not going under. We're going over. So every time I've been driving by all week long, I see on my own sign at Life Fellowship Church, and I make it personal. Danny, you're not going under. You're going over. I hope everybody reads that and don't even understand what it says. I'm not going under. I'm going over. I hope they just something quickens and touches their heart. Because I'm here to tell you, you've been called into the fellowship of his son. And the, the fellowship of his son is triumph. It's victory. It's blessing. It's never being separated from the love of God. You've been born into this thing. You're victorious. You're a world shaker. You're a history maker. Hallelujah. You're above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. We don't go by what the circumstances around us are saying. We stop and we recall to mind what God's word says. Therefore, hope begins to abound. Therefore, faith begins to rise up. Amen. The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith which we preach. How many of you believe it this morning? Did you get anything out of that? We'll stop right there. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want the musicians to come. I want you to uh, stand to your feet. If all those who are fixing to be baptized, if you'd get ready. And we're just going to have a time of ministry here for just a moment but I just want you to understand every God every word God ever speaks is a true word every promise that he's put in your heart you can bank on it today when God gives direction it's always correct when God pronounces his will it's always a blessing God's faithfulness brings protection over his people. God's faithfulness brings provision to his people. God's faithfulness brings his presence when his people come and give themselves to him. God cares with a complete and unbroken compassion that will never fail in your life. And the whole essence of this message is that God is saying it's time to recall to mind this. I want you to think of this. Your this this morning might be by his stripes I'm healed. Your this might be great as his faithfulness. Your this might be God is my provider. Your this might be, you know, I got to stop here because... He is my peace. He is my shalom. Your this might be, God is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything in my life. All I do know is, this peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can never take it away from me. It's from God. And whatever you're facing, it's not beyond the reach of God's word or his grace or his power to touch. And if you will just hold on, the way of escape is being revealed right before your very eyes. And the strength to make it and go through it is yours today. Because when you're weak, how many of you glad he then becomes strong? Would you just lift your hands one more time and just begin to say, God, great is your faithfulness to me right now. God's going to give us a different perspective about what we've been going through. We're going to begin to give that event. It hurts so bad. We're going to give it a new meaning. We're going to give it the meaning of what God's word says. Tell him you love him right now. Tell him. I can live in the present with joy and peace right now, God, because your promise is real to me right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, that you're our inheritance. You've given us an inheritance with the saints in light. I thank you for it, Father. Your this might be what he brought you out in the past. He helped you kill the lion and the bear. 
this old uncircumcised giant that stands in your way, he too is going to come down for one reason and one reason only, not because you're such a good shot, but because God is a faithful God. Might be in the fire this morning, but God's going to be faithful to stand with you in the midst of the fiery furnace. Great is his faithfulness. Come on, right now, just for a few moments. Now give voice to something right now. Just begin to praise him. Let the, let the saints of God rejoice and say, I honor you today, God. You are faithful and true. I praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Shakatai. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Worship the Lord this morning. we've been dwelling upon and let's pray Lord let the meditation of my heart let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable in your sight oh Lord my strength and my redeemer Lord we look to you our eyes are upon you Lord when my heart is overwhelmed Lead me to that rock that's higher than I. It's a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Acknowledge Jesus right now. Just reaffirm. Say, Jesus, you're my Lord this morning. I need you. I need you to be Lord over that situation. Lord over that circumstance. When the waves lift up their voice, waves have lifted up their voice against me the voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many waters 
Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning. Thank you for right now, for peace and for joy. I would have fainted except I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I want you right now to recommit your mind to think upon things that are right in the word of God. Would you just say, God, right now I commit my mind to you. Commit my thoughts to you, Jesus. May they be sanctified. May they be thoughts of your word, thoughts that are right, true, and fitting, and proper for a child of God. Touch me now, Lord. And I want you to join hands with somebody right next to you, and I want you just to pray for them and pray for our church. Pray for everyone across the aisles and say, Lord, as we're joined together in agreement this morning, I pray strength would come into my brother, my sister, my family member. God, we just ask you would bless one another in this place. We pray for one another that we may be healed. Healed in our emotions. Healed in our minds. God, we release our faith for one another. And we come into agreement upon the authority of your word. And we declare you're faithful. You will be faithful in what we're facing. You will be faithful in the fire that we're furnace that we're in you're with us now your presence is here now never leave us nor forsake us you're touched with the feelings of our infirmities and i pray right now the strength of heaven the strength of god to be made manifested in our life and in our heart in the name of jesus now i want you to do one more thing and lift your hand to the god one more with a praise and a shout of glory to god we honor you today, God. We give you praise and glory in this place. We stand in your presence. We stand on holy ground today. We stand, God, that you're making a way of escape. You're making a way where there is no way. You're making a way before us, God. The crooked place is being made straight. The mountains are being brought down. The valley is being exalted. We honor your name today, God, in this room. Pray you empower us and fill us with your spirit, God, upon our life upon our hearts God that it'll just not be something someone else says it's not be just something we tell but God our soul saith unto you great is your faithfulness to us my soul cries out and I honor you today Father in the wonderful name of Jesus give the Lord a hand of praise right now if you will give him praise and glory hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. You may be uh, seated. Turn to, turn to somebody before you're seeing. Say, God is a good God. Would you? God is a good God. If the ushers would come and put the pulpit down on the platform, uh, on, the, on the floor. Amen. Praise God. I told him in the uh, room before we met that uh, we're going to let the girls go first. Amen. I believe we're going to have Sarah is coming down to be ministered. Now, Sarah is Zoe's granddaughter. How nice. She has given her heart to God, and Bill Nealon is going to baptize her. Sarah, would you like to say anything, darling? A little bit louder. I love Jesus and Jesus is in my heart. She says she loves Jesus and Jesus is in her heart. Amen. Sarah, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who's coming next? Who's coming next? Robin. Robin. Come ahead, Robin. Robin. Robin uh, Guthrie is the one that also joined our church this morning. God's worked in her heart and she wanted to be baptized. Robin? I'm just very excited to be here and to finally be getting baptized. Um, I've claimed salvation since I was a young girl, 
but I've had a rebellious spirit about being strong-headed and I'm willing to submit to God's will and have him work in my life now. And to show an example to my wonderful children, Avery and Benjamin, that this is what Christ wants for us. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Beautiful. Robin, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe we have Renee Cookemeister. Come ahead, Renee. Who is this? Who? Renee. Come ahead, Renee. God bless you, darling. Renee's been coming to our church, I know, over a year now. She's such a blessing. We've already got her a greeter. See, we'll put you to work right away before a lot of things. Better watch out around here. I just want to say I love the Lord, and he will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. 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 Renee, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Now, John uh, has come to our church, and John came last Easter and gave his heart to God. And uh, his son Samuel is in kindergarten. You may can barely see him. Before you, before you, before you dunked here, uh, Samuel. I want, I want everybody to know, as a young boy, he has given his heart to God. He understands what is happening, and he wanted to be obedient because he understood what baptism was, and that God wanted us to be baptized so that he could be a disciple of the Lord. Samuel, you want to say anything? Jesus is in my heart. What was that? He's saying, Jesus is in my heart. Amen. That's precious. Samuel, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> Let's all stand to our feet one more time. Hallelujah. That is so precious. Thank you, Bill, for doing that. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise. And go ahead and put a shout with that. Will you do that today? Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy and your wonderful works to the children of man. Amen. Wednesday, I'd love to see you. Tonight's home groups. Find a home group. If you need any help, there'll be somebody in the back that will help guide you to a home group. We love every one of you. Glad to have you in the house of God. See you Wednesday night. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Amen.